Hello, it's Keith here, and this is Lesson 34 of the platform-specific series of my 68000 assembly programming tutorials. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Neo Geo CD. I've actually branched out into the world of CD. I'm doing the Neo Geo CD and the Mega CD a little bit. So we're going to be looking at how to convert our previous Hello World example into a Neo Geo CD game and compile it as a CD image and then get it running on MAME because it's a little bit tricky. So we're going to learn all of those stages that are needed to convert our existing stuff for the Neo Geo CD. Now, first of all, I'd like to quickly mention that I have written a book on 68000 assembly, among others. It covers ZAT 68000, 8086, and ARM. It's available from Amazon now. I'll mention it again at the end, but uh, please take a look if that interests you. Anyway, the Neo Geo CD, basically, we don't need to make too many changes. There's a few changes we need to make to our ROM header, and we just then take the files that we would normally give to MAME as part of our ROM, and then we just build them into an ISO with a building tool, and then we just need to convert it a little bit for MAME. So um, the actual changes we need to make to our code is virtually none, and so we can get our code working pretty easily. Well, let's go over and let's see it in action first and see how it goes. So here is our Neo Geo CD Hello World. If I just started up with my emulator here, see our exciting Neo Geo CD um, boot screen here and then if we just wait a moment hopefully if we've made our CD correctly we will get suspense is killing me it's loading it says we're going to enjoy it it's not a game it is potentially for the Neo Geo it's very slow it's a tiny little game anyway there we go we've got hello world on the screen um, as it should be. So that's the Hello World example and we've converted it and we've got it running on MAME in CD mode. Okay, so what did it take to do this? I've just updated some files there we're going to discuss in a moment. Well, not so much actually. Now, firstly, I have to say thank you to um, Freem who made the Neo Geo Assembly Programming for Absolute Beginners tutorial because the header that I'm using was based on that work. A very good example there. And so all we have to do basically is swap two sections of our cartridge which no longer work. So on the cartridge we had these settings here in this area of the interrupts. We have to now put these ones, the values we have to put in for, to get this to work are different. And then the other thing is for reasons that aren't quite clear, they swapped over two of the interrupts here. Um, not quite sure why they did that, just to spite us maybe, but the, these interrupts have been swapped around on the CD version. So if we don't swap them around, things won't work so well. But that's really um, basically all we need to do to get our game working. So once we've done that, our binary file will now be in the correct format for the CD. And the next thing we need to do is just get our CD image built. Now we're going to be building an ISO file and you can see we've got one here and I'm loading it with 7-zip which can quite impressively open ISO files. So you can see here we're using Chibiakuma's game cd.iso here and you can see there's a variety of files in this. Now the important one is ipl.txt which defines the contents of the CD from the point of view of what files are in it and where they needed to be loaded into RAM of the Neo Geo CD. Now the Neo Geo CD uses RAM for the things that the uh, normal Neo Geo used ROM, so the sprites and the fixed layer and also the program code are now in RAM and so you can see we've got various files there. The other thing we need is abs.txt, bib.txt and cpy.txt and these have to have some fixed values in it that um, the Neo Geo will expect to find and so we'll have to create them as well. And then the other files are actual program. Game.fix is the um, graphics for our fixed layer, the font in this case. Game.prg is the program code, the 68000 program code. Game.spr, well we didn't need that in this case but that is any sprites that our game is using. And game.z80 is the Z80 code for the um, sound. Now I've actually got some YQuest ported and we can play that on the Neo Geo CD now. So you would need all of those if you're m having sound effects and you're using hardware sprites and things. Now let's just go quickly over to my other window here and we'll just have a quick look at what we've got here. So I've taken some screenshots. Um, now basically you need to have these files abs.txt which has this text here. Um, bib.txt which has to have this text here and cpy.txt and they have to have the exact same contents as is shown there. Now if you go to my website you can download the pre-configured build files. I've updated my development tools now with the new scripts and new files to do the compilation today. So you will need those if you're going to build this with my tools. Of course you can always make your own. I'm going to discuss 
hopefully everything I've done and you can find your own solution if you want and good luck to you if you can do that now the IPL.txt is a text file and this has the file names and the position within memory that these need to be loaded into now um, the PRG file for example the 68000 code isn't going to be loaded into the Z80 but um, we need to define the position within the, P the 68000 memory that it's going to be loaded to and um, the format for all of those is basically that it's a sort of comma separated line and the first item is the file name in 8.3 format short file name and then the second one which is usually a zero is the bank number and then the third entry is the offset in RAM now the offset will often be zero but in the case of things like the fixed layer well, the position you load that into will actually affect the um, the pattern number that you will be referring to the entry in your code. So, for example, my example today, I've loaded in in the same position as the files were appearing in ROM on the classic Neo Geo version so that I don't need to change the code. But um, with regards to the sprites for the YQuest game, I've actually had to rewrite my code and change the address that the sprites were being looked for because now they're being loaded at address zero, whereas on the other system, the normal Neo Geo, that was ROM. So you, you do need to maybe consider things, how you want to work with things when you choose those addresses. Now, there are a few other file formats that you might come across, um, RLE compressed sprites, PCM, audio and um, patch files for the Z80 yeah, apparently the Z80 code can have extra data loaded in over the top but um, that's not something you're probably going to need I'm just mentioning them there for some completeness now one other thing I do need to maybe mention is that the sprite files are not quite the same format as they were before now SBR files are uncompressed sprites but the file has changed slightly now, if you remember before, we were splitting our files into two parts, and that was because the Neo Geo hashes file was expecting two files for odd and even bytes, I believe it was, um, whereas now we actually want a single file. Now, I was using this save sprite option before, which we would split into pairs, but we've got this new option in Acro Sprite Editor called Save CD Sprite, and this will save in the correct format. If you just go to Neo Geo here, and save CD sprite that will save in the correct format for um, the Neo Geo CD so I was able to convert my YQuest sprites into the correct format for the Neo Geo CD and convert the game without too much pain and suffering so that's what you're going to need now once you've got all of your files together you're going to want to build them into an ISO file so basically all you need to do is get them collected into a folder and then you can compile them together now you don't need anything particularly clever there's no magic header you had to have to add or anything so all we're doing is we are combining the files together and we're using this program MK ISO FS make ISO file system I think that stands for and we've got various switches here we're going to need to use so we're going to go over them all one at a time here so first of all we need to specify ISO level 1 which is the most basic ISO I believe so that's the, the format of the CD image and as it's an old system it's using level 1 we're then specifying the destination name of our file here after slash minus O there and what we've got next if I just scroll my window along here to see the rest so we're then specifying our ISO and then we've got this pad command and this pads the ISO to I believe it's 32 kilobytes We've then got an N switch, and this is emitting version numbers from the file. I don't know if the Neo Geo doesn't like them. Uh, they apparently should be there by default as part of the ISO spec, but we're removing them, and um, that is apparently what the Neo Geo will want. I'm just then specifying a label for my CD because it amuses me to see my um, website address on the um, CDs. And then we're specifying all of the files in the current folder should be included into the CD, and the current folder will be in this case build neo geo slash cd and of course before we do that we need to make sure we've compiled our file and i've compiled to build neo geo cd game.prg that's a binary file that i compiled using vasm of course if you've got your own assembly you can use whatever you want now that's all it takes to build a valid neo geo cd the problem is that MAME doesn't want to open that. It uses a, a format called CHD, and we're using CHD man to convert that ISO to a CHD file. You can see here we're loading our ISO, and then we are specifying the output as a CHD file there. So we've now got a CHD file that we can give to MAME 
Uh, unfortunately, we're still not done. Once again, MAME needs a, um, a an XML file for the CD. I don't know why it does, but it does. So we've got one here. Uh, but once again, that XML file has a, a hash. And uh, the hash isn't the hash of the CHD file. It's a hash of the contents of the CHD file. So the best way I've found, and in fact the only way, so I suppose also the worst way, is um, to use CHD man once again and specify info minus i and the cd and that will output the details of the chd we specify and i'm outputting that to a text file i'm piping that to a file called hash.txt and that will give us the correct hashes for the file and then what i've done is i've written a program um, i had a program before which would use a template file and will patch in a hashing a hash so what I've got is make Neo Geo hash, which is my old program. It's been updated now so that what it can do is it can take a Neo Geo hash that's been outputted by piping in that way, and it will read in the CD hash from that file and patch it into the XML file. I know that's all a bit of a pain, but the long and the short of it is, is if you use my batch file here, which you can download from my website, once you run MAME, it will not complain, it will run fine, and the hash will match the um, CHD file. If you don't, the game will still run, but um, MAME will whine at you and say, oh, your, your hash is wrong, your hash is wrong, and it thinks the world's going to end or something. So, yeah, anyway, as I would say, the best thing I would recommend you do is go to my website and download the build scripts that I've got and um, you know by all means make something better out of them and you know, tweak them to how it, whatever suits you but if um, if they work for me hopefully they can work for you as well and that will help you out and then once we've built that all we're doing is we're running with MAME Neo CDZ is starting up this Neo Geo CD emulator and we've got the name of the game there which will be looked up within the um, the XML file you just saw and we've got some other options there that we're using as well. So that's going to build as our Neo Geo CD and start it automatically, which is, as I always say, if you can get your game starting as quickly and with, with a little hassle as possible, and I can also speed this up by just pressing end there and fast forwarding things. So um, we can get our game started nice and quickly and we can get to the task of debugging our game, which is the more important thing. Now, as I say, I've been able to use this to convert my YQuest game to the Neo Geo CD. Here it is, and you can see it is still using hardware sprites. So we we have the game working, we have sound working, everything seems to be correct. So, you know, we can port our game without too much effort. As you see, I've had to put in a new entry into the header here and then the other thing I've had to do is there's just a very slight tweak to the sprites because the address that the sprites are being loaded to is not the same so on the Neo Geo CD the um, sprite pattern zero is the first one but on the non Neo Geo CD because of the ROM that's built into the Neo Geo I was starting from pattern 2200 here so I've just put a a thing in there and I've defined this build Neo Geo CD symbol so that I can have these differentials and um, these are being specified on the command line I'm just including this extra definition here this build Neo Geo CD is being defined on the command line of my new batch file and that's how I can create a program that will compile for regular Neo Geo or Neo Geo CD without too much work so there we go now, as I say, um, what I'd suggest, you go to my website, download the um, source code for the, today's example, the updated YQuest, the updated AccuSprite editor, and also the build scripts. But um, hopefully this has given you a bit of an introduction into how you can get st started and port your game to the Neo Geo CD if you wish to do so. Anyway, I will just take the opportunity to discuss the book I mentioned that I've written. It's available now on Amazon as a print book, as a real physical book, or as a Kindle book if you prefer that kind of thing. The book's 270 pages in total. There are a total of six chapters. There's one chapter introduction discussing all of the um, all of the terminology you're going to come across in retro programming, both in the terms of the hardware and in terms of the programming. So if you've never programmed before, that should help you out. And if you've done some programming but you're not familiar with the retro hardware, it should be a help to you as well. The rest of the book is then one chapter per instruction set. So we've got Z80, 6502, 68000, 8086 and ARM. And it goes through the um, processor itself, discusses the registers and the um, addressing modes and the other important things you're going to need to know about that processor, the things that have caught me out across the way in a lot of cases. And 
And then there's an, an instruction set for the basic processor, and each command is described, and there's some stuff on the you know, things like the, what flags are altered and the addressing modes where appropriate that that command can be used with. So it's intended as a sort of quick reference for the instruction set and a getting started guide for people who are just beginning with programming. And there's also some simple examples on each processor you know, things like how to, th basically things in the simple series for um, one system on each processor. So the Amstrad CPC on the 8086, the Commodore 64 6502, the uh, Genesis on the 68000, the MS-DOS -DOS box on the 8086, and the Game Boy Advance on the ARM. It's the easiest system on each one to get started programming with, the idea being I want you to get programming as quickly as possible, and I want the book to be as small as possible so it's in a handy size. As I say, if you're interested, go on Amazon and either go just do a search for with Chibi Akamas. And funnily enough, I'm the only person with a book with the word Chibi Akamas in the title. Very strange, didn't expect that. But also there'll be a link in the um, description below if you want to buy the book. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed watching today. Thanks a lot and have a nice day now.